in the practice. We don't reject any pleasure that's in accordance with the Dharma. We don't inflict unnecessary pain on ourselves. But that question of what kind of pleasures are in accord with the Dharma, that's something we have to look into. Because for most of us, the pleasures aren't end in themselves. We get swallowed up in them without thinking about where they come from and what they're going to do to the mind, or what they're going to do to the people around us. And that's precisely the question the Buddha has you ask as you're thinking about what kind of pleasures you want to indulge in. Where do they come from, i.e., what kind of karma do you create as you search for that pleasure? Are you going to do anything that breaks the precepts? Are you going to do anything that's harmful to anybody, or to yourself or other people? That's not in accordance with the Dharma. And if the pleasure aggravates more passion, more aversion, more delusion, that also isn't in accordance with the Dharma. So that's looking at it both in terms of where it comes from and where it's going to go. And to put the mind in a position where it can answer these questions with some fairness. We have to get the mind into concentration, because this is the practice that enables you not to be overcome by pleasure and not to be overcome by pain. Sometimes you sit here with pains in the body, but if the breath is comfortable, it can use that sense of comfortable breath to envelop the pain, go through the pain, dissolve any tension around it. You're not quite so afraid of the pain anymore. You have some tools to use with it. Most of our fear of pain comes from the fear that we don't have any approach to use with it. This is a fear that we picked up very early on, before we knew anything about language or anything. We had pains, and they seemed overwhelming, and they came out of nowhere. We were bewildered by them. All I could think was, we want help, we want help because we couldn't handle them on our own. So the kind of help the Buddha gives us is to give us the skills that we can use so that when pain comes we're not taken in by it. Of course, concentration on its own is not enough to deal with the pain. It also requires some discernment. The discernment to see what kind of perceptions are you applying to the pain and your relationship to the pain that are aggravating, that are actually forming a bridge from the physical pain into the mind. Or they take a mental pain and make it more than it has to be. So the meditation is here to help you not be overcome by pain, and also not be overcome by pleasure. Because to get the mind centered, to get the mind concentrated, you're going to be dealing with pleasure, but you can't let yourself wallow in it. When the breath feels good, you know the breath feels good, and you work with the pleasure, but you don't leave the breath. If you leave the breath and just soak in the pleasure, the basic cause for the pleasure is going to dissipate. As the Buddha said, it's active attention to the breath, consistent attention to the breath that allows the breath to become more smooth. And as the breath goes smoother, then the energy that comes from the in and out breathing that suffuses the body gets more and more refined. And the more refined it is, the more it can penetrate. And John Lee's images of nuclear radiation that can penetrate even mountains. In other words, it's so refined that it can go between, between the spaces between atoms, or the spaces inside the atoms. So you want the breath to get really refined and smooth, so it can saturate the body. It's there. The pleasure is there, but you don't leave the breath. This is what it means to be with pleasure but not be overcome by the pleasure. And once you have this pair of abilities, be not overcome by pleasure, not overcome by pain. Then you can look at the other pleasures in life. 
that you may be considering, the things you have to spend money for, the things you have to put out extra effort for. You can ask yourself, are these pleasures worth it? Because on the one hand, there is that question of where do they come from, where do they lead, what kind of effect do they have on the mind? But then you go deeper and you realize that indulging in some pleasures is going to make it hard to find other pleasures, and you have to balance them out. We can't have everything. And sometimes the need to develop good qualities in the mind has to take precedence. Qualities like generosity, determination, patience, equanimity. Sometimes learning to do without a certain pleasure is kind of like a trade. This is what renunciation is all about. It's interesting that in the Ten Perfections, concentration is not listed. But I think it's there under renunciation, because without the concentration you can't renounce pleasures. As the Buddha once said, no matter how much you may know the drawbacks of sensual pleasures, if you don't have the pleasure of concentration, the sense of ease that comes, getting the mind to settle down, you're going to keep going back to that sensuality. You need this alternative. And that's what enables you to renounce the things that are unhealthy for the mind, and even things that seem relatively harmless. but. When you compare them to the, the greater good that comes with giving them up, you realize that they're holding you back. The concentration allows you to overcome that resistance, not simply by being stark, but by having an alternative place to find your pleasure, a place to find your well-being. When we were in Paris, the, one of the questions came up. How do you practice concentration without getting stuck on the pleasure? And the answer was, go ahead and get stuck. Allow yourself to enjoy it, because that kind of attachment is a relatively easy one to overcome. It's a lot easier to overcome than the attachment to sensuality, and it's a lot less harmless. So don't be afraid of the pleasure of concentration. Actively cultivate it, but in mastering the skill of concentration, you'll find that the quality of being stuck on the concentration, which is basically stuck on the pleasure, is something that you will overcome as you master the process, because you begin to realize if you want to get really refined levels of concentration, really solid ones, there are times when you have to let the, even the pleasure go. It's done its work. Now it's the time for the mind to settle down to something even more solid, more secure. And with an even greater sense of well-being, a more refined kind of sense of well-being. It's in developing this taste for pleasure, becoming more sophisticated in your palate, you might say. Thus you develop wisdom, you develop discernment. And you become a better and better judge of what kinds of pleasures really are in accordance with the Dharma and which ones are not. What kinds of pains are in accordance with the Dharma and which ones are not. That too is something you learn. Because ultimately you have to learn how to be not afraid either of pleasure or pain. Able to use them. After all, the Buddha used Suffering is the first noble truth. He said, if you really comprehend it, you go beyond it. So you don't run away from it. You learn how to use it, just as you learn how to use pleasure. And it's in learning how not to be overcome either by pleasure or pain. That's how the mind is freed.